Hey everybody, this is Kevin. I'm with Bohemia Interactive Simulations. Today we're going to talk about multiplayer in BBS4. Uh, as you can see, I'm currently in the editor. I'm in the OME right now, uh, meaning there is no simulation running and I'm in scenario creation phase. Uh, the rest of the editor features and functionality I've talked about in another video, so I'm going to assume that you've seen that at this point in time. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about in ensuring your mission is ready for multiplayer is uh, the player status. So in this case, let's just put down a friendly Blue 4 unit. Um, uh, there's a non-playable uh, selection here. Basically, that means in the role selection screen, of which I'll cover in a second, um, is this role going to be there? When it, sets to when it's set to playable, that means it will show up. The other thing that's important to note is the description. This is any custom text you want to add uh, to visualize the entity in the role selection screen. Again, I'll talk, I'll show this off uh, in a second. But in this case, um, if I didn't put anything in there, it would say Ford Observer M4A1. But in this case, I can name it uh, Demo Observer. And instead of saying Ford Observer, it'll say Demo Observer in the role selection screen. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff, but it's important to note that if you want a role to be playable, you have to ensure that it's set to playable. Uh, so let's also just show the same menu for a vehicle. Uh, I've selected F4 vehicle by pressing F4, and I'm going to double click. And in this case, let's just put an M1A2. And again, you can see there's a description phase here, and there's also a uh, non-playable. Since a vehicle is comprised of multiple individuals, you can set them all uh, independently. Uh, in this case, setting them the commander, driver, and gunner as playable ensures that all of the individual roles uh, will be selected. The bottom one uh, determines if it's game AI or control AI. For right now, I'll just keep it as game AI. So now I've got my uh, two playable slots. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the briefing. So the briefing phase may or may not be important for your training uh, example, but it's important to know this functionality exists. So essentially, uh, there's a briefing phase. I'll cover this in uh, a second. I'll just put some text in here, demo briefing, uh, demo notes. I can attach images um, and change different data about what, what's going to be visualized in this um, particular demonstration. So uh, objective. So essentially, this can be for my trainee to get more information about the scenario. Once I'm happy with that, I can press OK. Let's save our mission now. And let's go back to the main screen. So now that I've got my demo multiplayer mission set up, uh, I can preview by pressing the preview button, but that'll bring me into the single player standalone mode. So no one will be able to connect it to my server. If I go back to the main screen uh, and instead press the execute button, In the execute phase, uh, this allows me to start a multiplayer menu. Uh, it's worth noting that I am currently not connected to a world server, uh, but if I was, there'd be a upload battle space to uh, world server button. Uh, so once I press the execute, the start button on the execute phase, it brings me to the multiplayer screen. So now you can see I've got my M1A2, all the ro uh, roles are uh, playable, and my demo observer are also playable. In this screen, this is where I select which role to choose. So the administrator can click and drag people. Trainees can just click on a specific slot. Uh, this determines if the uh, AI should populate that slot. So in this case, if I was the commander, there would be AI, and that's described by the AI uh, text here. If I click this, that means nobody's in that role, and it'll just be me in an individual vehicle. I can toggle them on independently. So in this case, I'll just have a driver. Oops, uh, I'll just have a driver and no gun or no loader. Uh, and then I can also lock the roles so nobody can enter or exit those slots. Once I'm happy uh, with these selections, you know, all my trainers are in their slots, I can press the OK button. It's also worth noting that I can also press the skip uh, briefing checkbox to ensure that I skip the briefing, but I want to show it off. I can also do the same for recording the AAR. Uh, once I press OK, it'll load the mission. And if we look at this briefing phase, here is the briefing text that I put in. So again, very simple stuff, but this is where, as the scenario administrator, you can uh, populate information about the scenario or the training objectives. Once I press OK, uh, I'm in the scenario and I'm ready to start training. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something from this uh, demonstration. Uh, if you guys have any further questions, please don't hesitate to, re hesitate to reach out to us on our website. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.